of them. <laughs> I've never seen you do one clean, clean. No. What about the no. 450, Mike? No, you need, you need oh, to... Yeah, you need to have Corey do it if it's going to be clean, clean. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I, I had to swap out a bike here recently for Mark, and and, and yeah, that's Cody, not Corey. But oh, I apologize. Yeah, I did, Cody, I Cody, did that last Cody time. does Cody does all my cleaning. But uh, no, I just had to get a bike ready, and, and uh, from the last ride we did a demo in South Carolina, uh, 450, and I actually buffed it out. Just so you know, Mark, I put tires on it, put a chain on it, changed the bars, filter, oil. Washed it. Had to bring one bike here. That was my only requirement. Brought that bike here. Mark has the other six, and he didn't do anything to his. Just so you know, like his, there was no tires done. It was they were washed. That was it. Well, I listened to your progression of your story there, and I suspect it's pretty accurate that you actually did the tires, the chain, the sprockets, and then you washed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I hate doing that. I just don't like to wash a bike. So I've avoided it all this time, and I I just don't want to. Yeah. I just don't. I don't like washing bikes. I'm glad we live in the sand because our bikes don't get that dirty. So you know, if I live somewhere else where you know it's a lot of mud and all this crap, I would I would not like to wash a bike. So. So if you figure you change enough parts. Then they're clean, then you have less to wash. It stinks because Ryder went back to school and now I have to wait till like 3.30 before I actually get him to come over and get any of the stuff done and clean my bikes. <laughs> now the real story's coming out. So instead of him being a high school student, he's a bike washing student for Uncle Mike. Hey, you gotta start somewhere. I started doing stuff like that. Somewhere. <laughs> when? <laughs> Let's see. Your mom and dad's here, and me and Melissa are here, and I think we all call BS on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see that one happen at all. So, so you you told me in the past that that fine first championship '97, whatever size KTM is it over there, that that was the best and the fastest bike you ever had, and you were willing to dig that out and compared to anything we have these days. You still holding by that? Yeah, that thing's badass. I like I, I love that bike. I don't I don't I don't I don't know if you did anything to it, but whoever did anything to it, that thing was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well I suspect KTM did because they built it. <laughs> and I might have put a tire on it or something, but that's it, so well, you'll be happy to know that I got the carburetor clean this afternoon. No way. And no way. fired that dude up. And I, I think uh, we can get Cody over here. He can he can take and change the number plates, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll line that baby up tomorrow, and and uh, you can just light it off like old times. That's, that's it. Whatever, I'll do it. That's not a problem. I think I texted Steve uh, Levine a picture the other day. He's like, you should look, fire that thing up, and I was like, you know what? That'd be awesome. But you still didn't have the enthusiasm enough to actually clean the carburetor and do it. No, because then I'd, I would, it would last about one test and I'd be like, I'm over this, let me give me my other bike back. <laughs> well, I don't think it'd last that long. <laughs> I think you'd be much happier with a current motorcycle that has been prepared for you. Sorry, uh Cody, you're on the So, So if you figured out out of, let's see, you have eight championship bikes, they're all up in your dad's loft. And by the way, Mike welcomes anyone to stop by Millville, New Jersey and come visit his motorcycles and interrupt Jack's service garage there so he can't get any work done. <laughs> He'll do tours. I think it's $15 an hour. <laughs> Last I checked. Will he sell those bikes? Jack or Mike? Jack. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he just wants them out of the garage. If he gets some cash to go for it, that's a no-brainer there. That one's going to work. So I'm absolutely sure I don't know the answer to this, and I bet you don't, and so that means no one else here does, but maybe your dad, of which one of those championship four strokes Ooh. that are in, up in your loft actually has a crankshaft and a transmission in it. <laughs> no, I have no idea. They just, 
when we when we got that one, actually, I know that bike has only 10 races on it from the nationals that year, because you wouldn't let me take any other bikes home. You wouldn't trust me with anything. So that thing, and I remember the last round, it's cleaned up, put away, and that was it. But since then, I know we kind of piece bikes, and I've I've switched bikes occasionally, every once in a while. So it kind of throughout the year. So it's kind of weird with bikes, but. Yeah, there's some bikes that have uh, that that just have cases and don't have mo don't have pistons, don't have cylinders, or or sorry, have cylinders but don't have cranks, and some run, some don't, but they look good. And they're a complete bike. Yeah, because that was pretty much. I got a call one day. Okay, this is my championship bike. I'm going to save this one. Rod's going to give this one to me. Put it in the loft. Put it back together. I'm like, how back together you want it? Well, that one had the special transmission, and you got it. You're like that. You want it in your other bike just put it back together. So one of them has covers on it and nothing inside of it, so I wouldn't try to get that one out and ride it but and do that. So so you say every once in a while you like to change motorcycles? Do you like two-strokes? Do you like four-strokes? Do you like 50s? Do you like 950s? What, what, what do you like to ride, Mike? Whatever. Hey, the best KTM is the whatever one I'm on. <laughs> well, that's a valid statement there. Because I, uh, I, ha I happen to be talking to your brother Rich the other day, and he goes, man, have you ridden that new 300 of Mike's? <laughs> I said, Mike, on a two-stroke. He's been racing a four-stroke. God, I've never seen that happen before. So, so you're saying in, like, in the same season, you're switching two-strokes to four-strokes? Yeah, heck yeah. I mean... We've done it, you've done it, so yeah, but lately, lately it's not like I'm going for their championship or anything, so I'm just, uh, I'm getting ready for my new job, my new position with Ride Orange, and i got to check all the models out, is what Mark was saying, so I was just kind of, you know, I was looking ahead in the future for my new job. I see, I think you had it right before when you said position and not job. I don't know if that one's quite, quite valid, so. And I was taking, I was selling it. And I was selling it to Rich, I'm like, hey man, you got to ride this thing, it's really good. <laughs> so, a potential buyer. Potential buyer rich. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> so, so Ryder, how many bikes have, uh, of yours has uh, your dad uh, partaked in here lately? All of them. <laughs> All right. You are Lafferty. <laughs> okay. I think we're probably... You look at the, the similarities between eight national championships. Randy Hawkins got eight national championships. They oh, eight? Us. Eight, seven. How many he got? He's got oh. Seven. oh, yeah. Well, seven. He's so excited about yeah. that. But he's got 73 wins. Yeah, I know. Okay. And Carlson, I said he got eight. But all these guys with all these titles... You know, Burleson has a, a degree from the University of Michigan, huh? Pretty prestigious college, but you probably yeah, didn't right. even know that. They've never had a job, not one of them. <laughs> and my hat's off to the guys who were able to do that. I'm proud of you, pal. <laughs> Anyhow, he will be going to work, I guess, as soon as this uh, race is over. He'll be employed as a orange, or an orange, is that it, a grapefruit? <laughs> oh, ride orange program, that's what it is. And uh, you, you tell us a little bit about it. And anything else you care to say about Mike? Actually, I'm pretty excited about Mike coming to work for our program. He's, uh, you know, been with us part time for about the last three years and, and done a fantastic job. And you know, talking to everybody at KTM and John Eric, who unfortunately couldn't be here, he got stuck in Austria, but uh, sends his best. Uh, you know, Mike's one of those guys. I'm going to say nice things about him, but then I got a good story for him later. <laughs> uh, Mike's one of those guys. It's as, as most of you people know, he's as good on the bike as he is off the bike. And KTM has a long tradition of that. I know a lot of people have seen the John Fenton movie that just came out. And that's kind of where it all started, Larry. You were around for that. John had a way of uh, getting people involved, keeping them involved. And he wanted their uh, conduct off the bike as good as their performance was on the bike. And Mike is a perfect example of that. Uh, you know, we, we've had guys like Yuha Salman and Kirk Gazzelli, Mike Lafferty, Ryan Dungey on the motocross side. So, we're, we're really proud to have Mike with us all these years and uh, have him stay with us. It's, it's going to be great for the company and great for the sport. So, so, but then, but you will have to work, Mike, because I don't want to anymore. <laughs> I didn't know you did to begin with. I want you to know he's already plotting to get your job. <laughs> he doesn't want my job. No, but uh, as you saw in some of the clips, Mike has, they call him Junior. And we have his dad, Jack, 
and he's got a brother Jack, so wouldn't Jack be Junior? And whenever we go to New Jersey, we call Mike Junior, but he's like, no, Jack is Junior. But in the motorcycle community, he's Junior. And his six days in Finland many years ago, he was like, you know, the big upshot kid coming up, and he was on the Junior team, and he was the Junior Junior. He was he was their their guy. And we kind of were picking on Mike a little bit all week, and when he got he had a cortisone shot and was crying like a little schoolgirl because it hurt, you know, <laughs> things like that, you know. It's just going on and on. And what was it, about day two or three, he had had enough. I'm sitting there at the check, Mike comes right in. Yeah, picking on me wasn't the word. No, that was like, you guys did stuff that I had no idea that could be done. Like, the worst, like, I was not happy. I was the happy guy. No way. Because it involved Oreos. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. There was a lot of things that these guys did. And it opened my eyes, but it was made me respectful, too. And I, I appreciate a lot of that. But hanging out with Rodney and Randy and all those guys was kind of, uh, you know, for me, a big shocker. But the things these guys would do, I was, it was just, I didn't realize then what they were doing. And it, it did help me. But, man, I was miserable back then. And this is leading up to my attitude. I did not. Have, I did not like Mark very much. <laughs> now you finish the story. <laughs> so we picked on him a little bit. I mean, you look at Randy. We did the same thing to Randy, and he turned out okay. Um, so, anyways, I'm sitting at this check, you know, doing my job, and all of a sudden, Mike comes sitting in. Sitting there eating ice cream while waiting for other riders coming in, because he was a chase guy. I shared with Al. So, I'm sitting there, and Mike comes riding up wheelies into my bike and blows it off the stand. And I'm looking at it, Mike looks at me and goes, take that! And I'm like, hey, no problem, wasn't my bike. <laughs> you know, we're at the pits, I mean, you got the Finns, you got the Swedes, the Italians, you know, all of the France, all the countries, you know, and everybody's looking at it. And the bike he knocked off the crate was Steve Hatch, our trophy rider. <laughs> Everybody's like, why doesn't Mike like Steve? You know? And then, then about this time, I, I looked at Mike and said, hey, not my bike. And Mike looks at me, he looks at the bike, he sees the numbers on it, and then he looks back and Steve's looking at him like, well, what's up with that? And then all of a sudden, that Mike, he, he realized what he had just done. And uh, I thought he, he was going to kick my ass. <laughs> He was in shape and a good big dude, and I wasn't, and I thought I was done. <laughs> but it, it was extremely comical at the time for the rest of us. I know Mike felt horrible about it, but that's you know when he officially got the name Junior right there. So, but then then one time too, another real quick one. We were up to six days in Michigan riding with Alan the gang, and. Uh, it had been raining and we were riding stuff and goofing off and trying to splash each other. And, then, and Mike didn't know me very well. We had kind of just met. And our group got turned around, so now we're riding in the back of the group. And I wasn't paying attention. There was this big water puddle. All of a sudden, I hear Mike coming behind me. I'm like, oh, I'm done. He's coming across this, just drenches me down. But when he does it, he hits this big rock, takes us both out. <laughs> and so we're laying there in a pile, Mike getting up, you know, and he goes, oh, man, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know, and he says, you're old, you're fragile. He said, I'm really sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> and I said, Mike, the only thing you did wrong there was you didn't pull it off. You should have been riding away right now. But, but no, Mike, like I said, he's a great guy. I'm really excited about him coming to work for us. And he's been a tremendous champion. And the sport's been a lot better because of it. Mike, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you Monday morning. <laughs> In, I don't know, 98, 99, race is over. I don't know how he did, I don't remember. But Al told me. I won. Yeah, right. I don't think you ever won. In a well, it'll be a better story. Okay, okay. He, won. he won. So we're at the last check, and we got five or six miles of road to ride back. Al tells him, he said, don't tear up the bike. Get it back to the truck. It's perfect. You didn't hurt it. I won't have nothing to do next week. So we you didn't tell me that, I wouldn't have done so what I did. So we turn right on the road, we go up and there's this hill and this paved road that just has these arcing corners. He's like, I bet I can wheelie all the way up this road. I said, I, I don't know, whatever, man. He goes up, he doesn't go a hundred feet and he's on the back wheel, throws it away. He's running, trying to stay up to not fall, lays on the guardrail, goes and picks the bike up. Oil coming out of the side case. The side number plate rip clear off. The foot peg ripped off, the brake pedal ripped off. I don't think it was that bad. Yeah, oh, it was that bad. It was that bad. <laughs> and you looked up and you said, you're going to have to tell Al that you wrecked me on the way back. <laughs> and I said, I've, I've known Al a little bit, and I know that I don't want to tell him that. <laughs>
Nope. So it was, it was, it was, it was pretty neat. But <laughs> me and me and Bateman don't have a good record. Nah, so, uh, nah, 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 I tried to get into Supermoto, and they were like, "No way, <laughs> not gonna happen." Yeah. Huh? But it was uh, my actually Randy Hawkins is how I got to know Mike. Back when we rode, you didn't have internet, Twitter, all this crap. But Randy had switched from Suzuki to Yamaha in '97, and actually came to the team that I rode for. And it was cool because Randy was my hero. So we were coming back from a race, and Randy called Tim, the guy that owned the shop, and said, "Yeah, I got second today at this race. This kid, Mike Lafferty from New Jersey, beat me." And I remember telling Tim, "I'm like, who is Mike Lafferty? I've never heard of this guy." But like I said, you had Cycle News, you never knew. So, I, you know, for a while I was like, I can't believe that guy beat Randy Hopkins. Randy's won everything and stuff like that. So that was where I first heard of him. And then a year later, we started going six days, stuff like that. Right? And then we got to be a lot better friends. And he took me on a lot of adventures, a lot of stuff he convinced me to do that I should have known better. I still did. Like, he told me one time, he said, if you come to Jersey in the winter and hang out, it's cool, we can ride all winter. We don't, it never snows. It, it never, never snows. snows. There's it never snows. We can ride all winter. All winter long. Them guys go to Florida, that's a waste of time. Come to my house, stay. I'm like, all right, we'll come over. So we had like a three week, I said, I'll come over for a couple weeks. The first day I was there, super nice. We go ride, he gets a flat tire, like half hour ride. I said, ah, we'll go back and fix it, we'll ride tomorrow. That night it snowed like 18 inches, and for the next week and a half it never came off the ground. And we never rode. We rode biked and did some other stuff, but we never got the ride again until I went home. And in Ohio it never had snowed, so I got the ride. And I think the story was, the weather hits the bay and it goes around us. It never comes to us. But I was dumb and I listened to him, so I was there for two weeks. Yeah, I, I believe you. I believe you. But it's been, we've been fun, we've done a lot of things. Uh, I actually helped him out a year. He called me up the week before the first National Enduro in 10. Auntie wouldn't give me a mechanic. Auntie wouldn't give me a mechanic. He's yeah. kind of tight, he's from Finland. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said, hey, what are you doing next weekend? I said, well, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't really have any plans, just hanging out here. How would you like to come to South Carolina? Help me out. I said, doing what? Uh, I don't have anybody to help me out for the race. I need you to come back. I said, I don't know, I'm gonna have to talk to my wife. I got, you know, I got a few obligations, not very many. But, um, I'll, I don't know, I'll let you know. So he calls me the next day. And he's like, dude, you gotta come, I don't have nobody. Real sob story and stuff. So I ended up helping him that year. We had a lot of fun. Um, it was good, it was uh, a learning experience. Luckily, he rode for Husaberg, and they only had two bikes at the time. So and he didn't want to ride the 570, so we rode the 450 all year. I only switched a couple of times. Yeah, well you didn't have you didn't have yeah. the choice luckily for me. Yeah. But uh, then we transitioned into now that you know it's not about riding a lot. I mean we still do a little bit, but about other stuff. Um, he comes to my house, he wants to go hunting in Ohio, him and his buddy from home, Scotty. Yeah. So he comes out in twenty eleven. Okay? He's like, Oh, I just got in this bow on First day, first day is there, he shoots a buck, a nice deer. I mean, it's the first day, I'm like, well, he's like, oh, we're going to go. It wasn't in, in, in Ohio, they're a lot bigger than what they're in Jersey. This thing was a peanut yeah. compared to what he seen. He was pissed because I killed it because he wanted to grow up to be bigger. I thought it was huge. But he's already mad that I killed this little buck that I thought was a monster. But he's there like 15 minutes. I mean, he just showed up. Hey, I tagged out. I was done. Yeah, he was done. He wants to leave. So <laughs> the next year, he's like, hey, we're going to come back again. We set it up. He comes back. So I told him, I said, I got pictures of this deer. I haven't seen it for about three weeks. I set up this tree stand, this one tree stand specifically for this deer. I said, you're on this road. It's going to walk up this way if it comes. In. He's like, all right. So the first night he goes out, he's like, I didn't see anything. And I thought, well, that deer's still not around. I'll let him hunt that stand the next morning. So he goes out the next morning. It gets light, I'll say 7.30. 7.40, he sends me a text. I'm, in, I'm a little bit away. He's like, yeah, I just shot that deer. <laughs> and I'm like, well, he's joking with me. He just messed with me. So I, I was like, like, no, I was like, remember that? You know, the big eight. Yeah. He's like, oh, the big eight. I was like, hey, I just shot the big eight. Text message. Yeah, that's all we're doing. We're, we're hunting, but we're doing nothing but 10, 100 yeah. yards from each other. Yeah. Text message each other. So, so I'm like, you know, I, you, know I, I, you might want to come down here. I just shot the big eight. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I said, okay, whatever. I, I kind of let it go for a second. He texted me back. He's like, really? I just shot this deer. I said, well, wait about 45 minutes or whatever, and I'll walk up there. I'll be up. He's like, Okay, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Down. 
And we get up there, and I'm like, are you serious? I haven't seen this deer, fed it corn, put up a tree stand specifically for it. I haven't seen it for a month. The second morning that he sits, 10 minutes into the hunt, he comes by, puts a perfect shot on it. I'm proud of him. And it went about 40 yards, and uh, we found it. Like I said, he took me a lot of places and uh, that he didn't have to. Help me out. Uh, I did push him once because he ran out of gas in Australia and he was crying. He was out of gas inside the roof. So I had to push him to the gas stop. He needed you again. He needed me again. And Hollywood, you know, talking his smack about Brazil. He was the guy that was looking for a ride at 3 in the morning to go downtown, if you remember that. Yeah, I, so, I do. I do. Yeah. There's other stories about him, too. Yeah. So he's not innocent. <laughs> But it's been good. I think uh, everybody says the same thing about you, which is surprising. But, uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. And I think he'll be good with the demo stuff. People like him. He talks. He can talk to people, and uh, people listen to him. They believe him. So he's a good liar. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Basically, uh, Larry asked me if I had some dirt on Mike, and uh, you know, I didn't say that, Mike. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason I agreed to come up here. And uh, the more you start listening to it all, and you know, there's really only one piece of dirt that I think it should be straightened out tonight. Um, you know, they got this little rivalry with these eight, eight times of this and eight times of that. You know, and uh, you know, I was hoping I'd probably come up here after Dick, but. Dick's probably coming up after me, so anyway. Um, you know, I mean, you, you both tied at eight. Eight's got, Dick's got eight of them in a row. You got eight of them stretched over time, you know. Um, you know, and that's, you know, you, you peaked, you know, he peaked like early, like eight times and boom, done. You know? <laughs> I didn't pay him to do this or anything. I said, I didn't pay you to say this or anything. No, I didn't. You know, so I mean, it's uh, it's a thing where, you know, I mean, you spread it over 20 years. You know, granted, I mean, the last one, you know, it's been a few years ago, but you also got to look at how many seconds overall. You know, you got beat by one second. You know, and then all the second overall in the championships and that. Um, you know, I mean, if you're looking at a way to break a tie, I mean, the longevity of it all and all that. Um, I'm gonna say. You're one up on Dick. Has <laughs> it been fortunate to be involved with uh, several firsts? I guess you would say with uh, with uh, Junior. The first time I met him was 1992 in this state at the National Enduro, and it's usual Mike needed something from somebody. He was a 250A little pump rider. I mean, I knew his older brother Jack, but. He had to have my bark buster. Luckily, I was a fair weather rider, and it was snowing and cold, and I'm like, have at them. <laughs> I was going to run pit for Alan Gray with that. So uh, then come along uh, 1997, first uh, Cherokee win. You know, they're hanging out, helping out. He stayed at the house and all. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty neat piece on the video. I forgot him even mentioning me because. Usually he didn't uh, mention or call until he needed something. <laughs> uh, you look, I was like, man, I hadn't heard from Mike in a while. He had a bad race. I know he's not calling. You know? <laughs> Don't call him either because he won't answer. Uh, you know, then the phone rings. It's like, I just started answering. What do you need? He's like, what? I can't call without needing something? I'm like, not usually. He said, well, okay, matter of fact. <laughs> But, uh, Where's the nearest buffet? Oh, <laughs> well, we could find that. <laughs> you sure weren't buying, though. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the neat part, the, the video you saw is Cherokee first win. He gave me his jersey from that race, signed it. It's been hanging in my closet probably for 18 years. I said I was going to frame it, and I finally did about two years ago. And uh, I just figure uh, that's something that he would appreciate, a jersey from his very first national win. Wow. Now, I, I would say the jersey's yours, but you owe me 200 bucks for the shadow box. Oh, I, I was better than asking for 
for that. I think you're way more than that. I already know. There's a list. Thank you very and, much. Uh, but I, we, I did luckily find a couple pictures of you and your umbrella girl, Robbie, <laughs> from some of those winters you'd come stay at the house. You complained the and, whole time. Uh, <laughs> well, no, you're lucky. I dug through five computers, two boxes of photos, and I could not find the hot tub picture of you and your umbrella girl. <laughs> But I got a great, I got a lot of great stories, but I'm too scared of Brandy <laughs> to even get started with them. So uh, you know, there's some things they say that happens on the road stays on the road. But we'll keep it at that. But uh, congratulations! Uh, glad to be part of uh, several pieces. You know, got to be uh, turning wrenches or actually just looking after the bike Al prep because Al was a promoter the day he wrapped up his first title. So. Uh, here you go, brother. I appreciate uh, what you've done and great career. Thanks, Thanks, you just don't bring up 2009 back here. <laughs> when I drove here all the way from home by myself, the only thing I thought about was back in 2009 when I won the race and you beat me by one, one point for the championship. That's it. That whole 12 hours. So, you know, that's all right. I can just bring up, I, I can't even remember what other year it is, but uh, at Wickenburg, Arizona. Do you remember that year? Yeah. yeah. It was only like four or five points. Three, it was like three or four yeah. points. I mean, I won that race, one though. position. You won the race. <laughs> and I started out in eighth place <laughs> after the first test. It was looking bad. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was game over. You had, you had it dialed. There was like all these other local guys out there. I think Ty Davis was ripping, and I was not. <laughs> and uh, I think my dad, you know, was wearing Birkenstocks and kicked the, kicked the cactus to see if it actually was going to hurt. <laughs> they did. Uh, oh, that's a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow, you know, I was lucky enough to put in a decent enough ride that day. But just like in 2009, you were able to hold down the fort and you came away with the last race, you know, win. And but that was one thing that I knew that it was going to be tough if I was coming down to that last race. Like, I better have a little bit of edge up because I knew you were going to be there to give it everything you had and uh, you would definitely be there to win. So, Well, that's the good thing with that. It was we, we raced that whole year nonstop, full on. I mean, I think I had five wins, you had five, and, and it came down to one point, hey, the better guy won. You know, in my eyes, that was good. No, I mean, <laughs> the championship, not the race. I was giving you a, a comp that was nice. Uh, I, I really can say that my best racing has been against this guy. I mean, uh, we've had so many races where we were counting the seconds at the very final check of who was going to win this. You know, there were so many races that were nail biters and just, I mean, five seconds, two seconds. I know there was one freaking alligator race, he beat me by three seconds, and that was the closest. I mean, I've been working up each year, each year, I was like, all right, this this year is going to be it. Like, I've been you got it down, it's all yours. No, I don't down there I got a couple if you want one, I'll give you one. I got those stupid little alligator trophies on my porch for second place. They say first place, but you got the overall. I just want to chunk them in the pond. Really. Uh, you got more cards? Right? Yeah, that, that one just pissed me off. I mean, you're going to have to race that again or something. So, yeah, that's game yeah, over. The, the, the biggest one I remember is when we first did this whole thing with timekeeping that, uh, that um, well, I'm sorry, without timekeeping and electronic scoring was, for me, it was, it was a whole new game and a whole new thing. And I think it was the very first race in South Carolina. There was four 20-mile tests, something like that. And after the second test, or maybe the first, most of my known, but we went the whole 20 miles, and at the very end, we both tied to the second. And it was like a, it was like exactly seven minutes and zero zero. Like it was. So at times like that, that's when I'm glad the whole thing happened, and and we raced, you know, four seconds that time all the way down to it, and, and to have it, you know, tie after 20 miles. That was uh, that was you know something for us that I always remember. That you know it was. No matter there was no flip cards, you weren't beating the flip, you weren't doing the minute thing. It was, you know, we were racing it all the way down, and that really got me realizing, man, we're, you know, every second counts, and that kind of changed the game a little bit for me. Yeah, I remember, you know, when I started really 
up in my level into the enduro sport and starting to come around. We were doing the, you know, following, you know, timekeeping and sneaking in on checks. And this guy, this guy had it dialed. He knew, it, you know, all the, you know, the pink house over in the alligator. That's gonna be a fake check, whatever. You know, <laughs> you know he's like, oh yeah, that that red canopy out there. They're joking. You know. <laughs> He'd go in there about 15 minutes early, creep in, you know, it was like a, wait a yeah, minute, wait 15 a minute. minutes early. Dude. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I guess I'm just going to go down here and bleed my break. <laughs> <laughs> Your story, good, man. <laughs> but, uh, it's a good thing it's not time you can still. I know, because you'd be over in the side of the woods holding something over your scorecard. No one would see it. You know, you got your head down. And you're like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sticking myself. <laughs> and uh, but that was one thing. You know, we uh, tried to intimidate each other a little bit. You know, he held strong. You know, you know, kept to himself. And you know, I learned a lot from him when he would do that kind of stuff. You know. Uh, I remember several races, you know, he'd be on a four-stroke, I was on a two-stroke forever. And, you know, get a race start, we got a lot on the line, and, you know, I had to hear this four-stroke, burn, burn, he's revving it up right behind me, you know, getting in the head a little bit, you know, we're just playing. He's just revving it up. Yeah, we're warming it up. We're warming it up. We warmed it up every section. <laughs> Glad to see it work a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing it, uh, I think, tomorrow behind Jesse, so it's gonna be good. Uh, I'll be two minutes behind you doing it still. Let's do it. I'll be two minutes to go and I'm still repping my shit up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, some of my favorite races and uh, greatest memories, you know, I've had this guy involved with the championships that I've won, and uh, they wouldn't be the same if I wasn't racing him, so, you know, you know big props, and I. I'm really happy to just know this guy and be racing him. So, good job. Thank you so much. You said it was more wins than he had? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Did you, you probably didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I pretty much knew that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I guess I had the opportunity to uh, see Mike come into sport. You know, as, as I was coming in, I actually was um, the guy to beat. And, um, you know, like I say, we, we, we're sitting there talking statistics and stuff like that, but uh, what I'm going to look at it from my side, from Mike, is that, you know, here is a snot-nosed kid that's coming to my game. And um, so, you know, I, I had a really good right to, you know, look at it as, as he's stepping into it, to not look at him as, uh, you know, you, you try to be nice to your competitor, but <clears throat> you just try to keep your distance from it. But, you know, as, as my career and as Mike came along, you know, we actually became friends, you know, and it, it, it came to a point where when we would do stuff or see something, we're competitors racing, um, you know, trying to beat each other, but then we would jump in a rental car, go to the airport together. And and, and as, as we if I look at this career and, and what I've seen is that Mike's talent is unbelievable. Uh, what he's done is accomplishment. But I, I feel like I've had a lot of time to talk with Mike over our trips and, and years. You know, he was at 20 and, and my career spent at 18 years. So there's, there's a lot of time there that that actually Mike was starting coming to me and would, would, would talk to me, say like, hey, you know, what, what do I do about this? What do you think about this? So it, it really, you know, uh, I was proud the fact of now that say the torch I had was handing to Mike, but he still had enough respect for me to come talk to me and and call me or would do stuff. And um, so you know from that point, and I kept trying to talk to Mike and and, and tell him that uh, this window, what you're doing, is so small. I said, you know, you know, do the right things, but uh, it will come and go before you blink of an eye. And you know, I kept telling him too. I said, you know, Mike, you know. Timing is everything. I said your career timing was was perfect, you know, uh, and not just from what he's accomplished. And I was letting him know that, you know, there's there's people in this in, in here get him to uh, to set up here like this, and it starts with his family. I mean, you know, here, uh, you know, the Lafferty's. I, I'm I'm a guy that's trying to be Mike and uh, a friendship develop. 
I'm sitting at the dinner table Saturday night eating spaghetti, and then I got to go try to beat Mike the next day. And and the point is, is that I kept trying to explain to him too, is as time goes, championship numbers they'll be written on the wall, people remember. But when that part is gone, friendships could be forever. And that's something that you know a lot of the young kids uh, try to explain, and I, and I and I honestly believe Mike is doing the same thing. I mean. A good example, my wedding, Mike and Robbie was at my wedding. I mean, you know, it, it, it's the friendship that we both, you know. Goes back to stories. I don't know what happened after my wedding. There's probably some stories that <laughs> probably I wouldn't want to go there either. But I let Robbie and Robbie Mike. was my date. That was there. I wasn't going to go there for right. it, but I've had people that ask me, hey, is that some of your motor motorcycle buddies? Why are they together? I said, I said, just good friends. Don't worry, it's all okay. So, um, you know, and, but again, I, you know, to have the opportunity to see Mike come into it, carry it, become a champion, you know, from the fact of, you know, the Lafferty's, I mean, uh, you know, his dad, his mom, his brothers, I got to know all them. I mean, from um, Melissa, Alan, it's just a, a great group of people that's able to get Mike here. And, and as like for us, yeah, the, the torch is planned, and, and, and my friendship with Mike is not just at this track or at this event, it's, it's a lifetime. And uh, Robbie, he's already asked me when he's down there, he's seen the deer stands on my property, he's like, hey, you think I'm coming hunting? So, <laughs> we just raced the last door at his property. The, the first thing I asked him, I was like, hey man, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> he's like, no. He's like, no. <laughs> Robbie's already clued me in, if you feed him, he's going to shoot him. So. <laughs> But, um, it, you know, just again, the fortune side of that, like you said, the statistics, I know Larry jokes about stuff and, and you know, from Dick and myself and, and all that, you know, we can, we can razz each other, he's done stuff better, I've done Dick, it, all that is great, but when it all comes down, we serve, this is a family, and when it's all said and done, um, I'm proud to be part of this family and, and seen it and uh, just glad to be here. Thanks, Randy, that's, that's a big part of it too. That, that I can always say that it's really hard to to kind of do what we were doing. Um, you were, you know, you were my hero growing up, and then I'm racing with you, and then, you know, to be competitors, and then to say, hey, man, you know, where do I go for answers? In a lot of times, in a lot of places, and you did that, you know. And, and when people say it was, you know, it's easy and things come easy, it's it's a lot harder than what what you think because there's no one else really doing what we've done, I guess. And when it all comes down to it, like you said, it's, we have a small window, and you taught me a lot, Dick's taught me a lot, Al Melissa taught me a lot, my family's taught me a lot, but it's all about being respectful and, and being a good person, you know. You can ride dirt bike all you want, but, you know, it, it, it still comes down to friendships, and, and uh, I've learned a ton from you, and I really do appreciate those times you didn't have to take time to, to, to talk to me, or you could brush me aside and so forth, and that's where I try and... I want to do the same, you know, to the next kid and really show them, like, uh, you know, it's a lot more than riding dirt bikes. It's, uh, you know, it's a family-oriented uh, event, and, and uh, you know, friendships are, are a lot thicker than, uh, than, 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 uh, than than these plaques or, you know, championship and, and so forth. So for me, it's uh, it's been a great ride, and I really do appreciate everything you've done for me. You helped me out tremendously. Well, thank you. I do have a, a quick story, but one for that is, I was at one of the events, I was done, and I'd seen Mike and I was good to talk to him. He did come up to me and said, how did you put up with me? And, and I said, well... All right, I said, because I said, I said, well, there's some kids being uh, knuckleheads now, and I go to radio like, man, was I, that, was I that much of a knucklehead? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> and I said, you was. I said, and I told you, it's going to come around to you. So, But, uh, you know, the quick story that is, is funny, we talk about Alan and Melissa, but... I remember particularly one time my mechanic Dale and Alan was all just it was all a group like a traveling bunch of gypsies. It was that event? I think I'd beaten Mike the week before in the him and Al's test. They was sniveling. He was just being Mike, and he was down there. We was listening at him. And th this goes back to the job thing, so you guys can understand when I say this. So uh, Alan just says, "You know what? That's fine, Mike. I'm done." I don't have to be here. You know, I got stuff to do at, uh, at my company. We got plenty of stuff to do. We can just quit right now and you can go get a job. When the said job came up, <laughs> this bike was perfect. I'm ready to go race. Now let's do this thing. So when they talk about job, and I was a witness, when Al said go get a job, that was the absolute finish. <laughs> Thanks again, Mike. I enjoyed it.
feet until I seen this deer, and I'm a little pissed. <laughs> I, uh, I killed a nice deer a couple years ago, and I finally had something up on Mike, and now he's one up me again. So <laughs> everybody thought I lied. Like, oh, I killed a big, the big I didn't deer. It. They're like, where's it at? Where's it at? And Robbie's been holding it for two years. <laughs> I think it's Robbie's deer. <laughs> he fed it. I just killed it. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, one of the things back home between our common friends is uh, the big joke is if Mike had a bad race and bad race and Mike is second or third, you know, you didn't hear from him until Wednesday or Thursday. And, uh, you know, then finally when you did hear from him, it was, uh, hey man, we got to figure this out and this is what happened. And he was always working to be better, whatever his weakness was. And I think uh, that burning desire inside of him is what kept him going for 20 years. And uh, I'm damn glad to call him little brother. That's it. King Richard, Lord Lafferty. Eight in a row. You can ask him. It's Bo Bobbitt. He looks, he's got Bo's birth. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the hole here in this. I don't know. This looks like it's got a lot of little holes. Maybe that's a shotgun. I'm not sure how that is. You know, It's, it's truly an honor, for, an honor for me to be up here with Mike. And, and uh, we have a lot of fun with the eight times thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of memories. But, of course, I'm of a whole other generation of, than Mike. In fact, Mike is a good friend of my son, John Eric. And so that's, you know, he's like more like a son than... than uh, then a friend is like, would you would you be with your buddies? Because I'm more like Jack's age than I'm at, than I'm, than I'm Mike's age. And we in, in our in our careers were on a hold off for a different decade <laughs> or two. <laughs> so 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 you know the, the comparisons are who cares? You know what what's important is really. <laughs> You know, you know, Jeff says, hey, uh, eight now. Well, you know, it, it, the reason is because I squeaked out my eighth one. I mean, because I had hired, to, you know, uh, Marky worked for me and, and uh, at Husky, and, and before that it was Terry Cunningham and Melton, and they worked for me, and I knew those guys. They were coming on, and I squeaked out my eighth, and, and I'm like, <clears throat> I got an eighth, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I, I was just a, that's just the way I was. I, it, it, you know, and, and, and for Mike to, to keep going for 20 years, it blows my mind. It's just like, and not just going on, but super competitively. And, uh, uh, you know, and I was, I, I was really kind of, I, I, was, I, was, I was rooting for you for your ninth. I thought it had been awesome. And uh, but even so, the, what really is important in, in, in the, the rivalry of the eight time thing, to me, what it the, what it helped to do was to 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 bring some more enthusiasm to the sport. Because no question about it, we like riding motorcycles better than we like working. You know, and, and, <laughs> and, you know, and and. and uh, what we want to do, and, I, and I'm so stoked that that uh, Mike's going to be working for the Orange Orange Brigade because it's putting stuff back in the sport. I, if once I got done with my Husky years, I went to work for myself, but been, stayed in the industry, and I've been with the Moose program since '94. Uh, you know, and, and outside, a lot of people think it's a big industry, but it isn't truly really a big industry. And, and Randy is absolutely right. But what, after the numbers are up and all, then it, it still comes down to how you relate to people, how you, who your friends are. And, and one of the things I think that's really, Mike's done a fantastic job about, which is old school. I was really old school, still old school, is loyalty. I, were, I wrote all my championships. I wrote all the time on Huskies. That was, that was it. And, and in the same way, he stuck with KTM got sidelined with the Hooserberg thing because that's what they wanted, but he, he was a KTM guy, he always was a KTM guy, and still is a loyal KTM guy, 
going on with the Orange Brigade. And I, I think that personally that's one of the real solid attributes of uh, a professional athlete is to have some loyalty to the people that helps them along and to support that, to support that brand. So I, you know, that, that, and that's cool. That's really cool. But I have, I don't have anything in granite. <laughs> we got a little plastic bag, but we, we, we just brought a jersey out. I can figure out how to put it out here. Here you go, Mike. It's just, some people don't remember, but when we introduced the, the Moose product line in, in uh, 94 and in 95, Mike was one of our guys. In fact, you were riding, the, you were a Moose guy when you won your first championship in 97. Yeah. And he was a great ambassador for us, and we just wanted to recognize the, the years that he put in and the loyalty he was and the great times we had as, at, at Moose with the brand. That was, all, that was good. You know, that was really good. Thanks, Dick. And, that, and uh, just to even, you know, be in the same category with you, and, Doing, you know, I never thought I'd have eight. You know, I'm just, I was pumped with the first one. You know, I never thought that it would carry me on, and and uh, we'd have a relationship. And you know, I didn't realize, you know, what I was doing when I did it with the people I had around me. I had a great bike. I knew that. I had a great support crew. I had a great family. But you know, when we started winning races, it was that I knew that when it happened, that's all I wanted to do. And uh, I just, I've carried that, you know, all this time. And you know, I, I it's, uh, it's gotten me this far. But uh, you know, it's an honor just to be in the same class with you and, and to uh, for you to still be around. It's been great. I, I appreciate everything you've done and, and still being friends. And like Randy said, it's, a, it's something that goes on for a long time. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's great. And, you know, there's no question about that. That, that Like I say, riding dirt bikes off-road, it's, it's like the deal. You know, I mean, it's really, it's what what we want to do and, and you'll keep on doing that you're, you're you're not racing in the same way but you're going to keep on being involved in the sport and, and passing on that 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 passion and and certainly that passion is one of the things that john eric and the whole ktm crew brings to the sport and certainly one of the reasons why they're so so strong in the market is the passion and you had the passion and uh, yeah, that's just awesome. And uh, it's a pleasure to be a friend. That's Thanks. for sure. Thanks, bud. Thanks. Did you ever? Did, did it ever stop being fun for you and turn into a job? No, no, it's never. It's never. That's what being with Al Melissa has always been with me. It's always, uh, you know, it's it, it, there's a there's a certain thing you got to put out there as far as. You know, I've always, you know, that's what I've always been trained with these guys. It's just, just, it was every section, every race, you know, it's just take it one thing at a time and, and just to have fun, you know. And that's why I'm still here and that's why we're all still here, I hope, is, you know, a lot of it is, I, I, we all love riding dirt bikes. We can all share that same passion and then, uh, you know, we, you know, we go to races and, uh, you know, we all race and compete. We want to win, but it comes down to it, you know, I, I that's what I still want to do, what I share with riders, you know, it's still fun just to go and ride your dirt bike. Can you look back over your career, and this might be an impossibility, Mike, but can you think of, of, of an event or a series or just a particular time when something sticks out in your mind that's it's going to be something that you remember forever, or is it all blender? Yeah, it's a lot of blender. There's a lot of good times with Al Melissa. Um, that's been crazy, it seems, to, uh, to think about it now, but kind of, I didn't realize it, how good I had it back then, you know, or, or how lucky I was to uh, to have, I think there's a lot of guys that are more talented than me, but I had the right team, you know, and I think that goes a long way. So for me, it's it's all the, you know, I, I still think I was very, I, I was, you know, I, all I had in my mind, I wanted to win, I had the right people with me, and I took that and ran with it, and I was extremely lucky, and, and I'm even luckier that, you know, to have this happen, and I could have never imagined being, you know, being 20 years and doing this and still having the friendship I have with everyone and everyone here. Do you think you'll ever ride another national? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I can already hear Mark saying, no, no, you're done, no, whatever. I'm going to sneak out somehow and I will race. But I, the biggest thing is, I don't, I just want to go and race and I don't care where I finish, what I do, I just want to ride to ride. You know, and, and honestly, if, 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 you know, I just. I call bullshit. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'll be 40. Can I ride a senior class? Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever, Levine. <laughs> <laughs> How about the tiebreakers tomorrow?
<laughs> How about uh, the riders? Did you single out riders that, well, I guess because of the career timing, that you got to look at Bobbitt, you got to look at whoever, whatever, but can, can you single out riders and say, this is the guy I've got to beat, and this is how I'm going to do it? Randy was by far the number one and the hardest. I mean, the, the, he was my hero, and he rode, uh, you know, he was on a national team, and he, he made a big break when he switched to, you know, uh, Yellow Bites, and that was a big deal, you know, and, and, and when he made a little dynasty there, and he was the guy that was, you know, I could have never imagined I could beat Randy, you know, and then to, to actually, you know, have him teach me a bunch of stuff and then to compete against him and, and beat him, that was like the biggest conquer I've ever done, so, you know, and that, and, and once I got my hair a little bit stronger, you had to have, you know, it was kind of like, man, I got this, and then to have Russ come up and a bunch of other young kids and, yeah, it was, uh, you know, Russ is, that was the battle we had quite a bit, but I think the, the cool thing now is, even for this year, um, definitely not as competitive as I want to be, but to have the National Door Series have, you know, Andrew and, and Jesse and, and Grant now to win races is, um, you know, to have new kids, is, that's awesome. That's what we wanted, you know. I think it was, I'll say it was kind of boring back then when me and Russ were racing against each other, but now to open up the door to, to a lot of other different kids and, and uh, you know, they're chasing this passion and they like it and, you know, I think it's awesome that, that we're, uh, you know, that, that we have, you know, the new winners and the, the new kids, the new blood, I guess you'd say, and now those kids can go after it. I think that's where, you know, I'm pumped that I went through a little bit of time there, but man, to see the series is, you know, where it is now is, is going to be awesome. You know, there's a, there's a theme that Randy talked about it, Dick talked, everybody has, has mentioned it. It's, it's the support and the people that are with you and around you and the support that they give you when you're on the way up. And that is the one thing that all of the champions share. They didn't do it alone. They had some people out there that worked their butts off for you. I, uh, it's your chance to say thank you to them if you wish. and, and uh, I, I'm not going to cry on this. I swear I'm trying to make this to make your this is hard. <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to happen. But I say my second set of parents and the parents offside, you know, out, outside of, of being my parents, which you know, it started with my mom and dad, of course, and I can never thank them for them getting me to the races and starting out. But you know, to them, my 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 family, my brothers, and so forth was always. Uh, you know, he didn't realize it, but it was just the family, you know, and you do what you do because that's, you know, that's your family. You don't always be your family. So I was lucky enough to have two sets, it seemed like, and, uh, you know, for all of them. And, and uh, you know, I can't thank them enough. And, and I, I, I hope, uh, you know, kids and other people realize that that goes a long way with your family. It's always, you know, it's, it's a super tight thing. And I'm proud to say we're still great friends and, I, you know, we're, we're going to be forever. So with them and with KTM, um, there's so many people. Uh, Christy, CJ, um, you know, Auntie for doing all the work. And it's not like it used to be with me, Al, and Melissa doing everything. Now we got, you know, we got team trucks and we got, you know, team managers and we got all this stuff. So it's come a long way with all these guys and me being on the on the team again this year. It's been it's been amazing, been an eye opener for me. So um, everyone at KTM, like I said, Auntie, even from Kevin driving the truck and and rookie, um, you know, doing suspension. We got a suspension guy. Um, Cody for his first year helping me out. It's been it's been uh, I'm sure frustrating for him. We're definitely not as, as competitive as we like to be, and we, we work real hard. And Cody's been a great guy, and I really appreciate everything he's done for you know prepping my bikes and, and just being there for my last year and kind of dealing with my with my nonsense. Um, I've only changed bikes once, just so you know. But uh, what? twice. What? Who's keeping count? <laughs> what do you think your thoughts will be on the uh, you roll up the line for that final time tomorrow? I, I hope I, I, I want to do good. Like I want I, I want to be in contention. I want to. I, I think at the first test. I think at the end of the first test that I come out and if I can see Al or uh, uh, Marky and Melissa give me a thumbs up, or if they just shake their head like no, you suck. I'm going to be going. <laughs> That's what I get from Tony. Tony, if Tony's at the end of the test, it's always like, he's just like, no, dude, just keep going. Don't even worry, you're not even in the hunt, just ride. Like, this is going to be a long day. I hope it's, I hope it's not one of those, but, uh, you know, it, it's going to be fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm going to try my best. I've been, you know, doing it the same routine I've been doing, but I'm, I feel, you know, there's a, just a little bit of difference there. You know, I'm going to enjoy it a little bit more. And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, put in a strong result. That's, that's, I'm, I'm not going to stop doing that.